Real Vision CEO and co-founder Raul Powell is back with another interesting analogy about cryptocurrency and the internet. The former fund hedge manager compares the rate of adoption of the two technologies to evaluate how fast cryptocurrency is spreading worldwide. Powell explains that while crypto is growing at 137% per year, the internet grew at 76% per year during the same phase of its adoption. Raul explains further that even if the adoption of crypto is reduced by almost half, by 2030, the number of crypto users in the world would have increased to a whopping 5 billion users. This would mean that crypto becomes the dominant source of owning, transferring, and recording value in contractual terms in the world. The Real Vision boss shares some more important information in his long string of tweets, including some very specific price predictions for Bitcoin. To make the video more enjoyable and easily digestible, we break down the tweets into bits with little narration in between. Please watch to the end, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy. Let's get right into Pal's tweets. The first part of his tweet reads, Thread about network effects and how to value digital assets. For a global macro investor, my independent research service, and I spent a long time analyzing various on-chain data stats to see what were the key drivers of network price and network effects. We updated our well-known chart of crypto adoption versus the internet, both starting at 5 million users. 2021 was an accelerating growth year, and the Reed's law effect of networks built upon networks creating even more exponentiality is clear. By year six, after the first 5 million users, crypto has 295 million participants and the internet had 119 million. Crypto is growing at 137% a year, while the internet grew at 76%. As I always say, this is the fastest adoption of technology the world has ever seen. If decentralized applications slow their growth to that of the internet's initial growth rate, you get to 1.2 billion users by DEC 2025. Or if we assume the first six years rate of growth of the internet, we get 2.5 billion users. Using the 76% growth rate, suggesting a near halving of network growth as the network matures. We now get to 5 billion users by 2030. This means it becomes the dominant source of owning, transferring, and recording value and contractual terms globally. Wow. So far, we see the Real Vision boss comparing the adoption rate of crypto and the internet after both hit the initial 5 million users. After the first 5 million users, the internet saw a yearly growth rate of 76%, growing to 119 million users. Crypto nearly doubles that figure during the same phase of its adoption, growing at 137% to 295 million users. So if crypto continues to grow at only 43% per year, by December 2025, there would be 1.2 billion users. If it grows faster at 76% per year, we would have 2.5 billion users and 5.1 billion users by 2030. Raul Pal does not just give an estimate of how fast crypto adoption will be in the next few years, he also talks about how we get there. Here is the second part of his tweets. Okay, but what drives this adoption? Clearly, everyone owning a part of the network creates an alliance of interests which leads to exponential growth. And simply put, blockchain is just a better way of doing things in the digital exponential age. In a digital world, everything trends towards zero in cost driven by more law and other phenomena. But blockchain changed all of that. It created verifiable and immutable digital scarcity, allowing an explosion of use cases in the layer one, layer two, and applications layer. We now know that Metcalf's law is the key valuation model for digital assets, but it's a hard formula to apply, and I'm a bit of an idiot. So I wanted to find an approximation that helps understand network value. After a lot of work, trial and error, this is the answer I found. The value of a digital asset network is driven by daily transaction volumes in dollars or units of value multiplied by the number of active users. When you apply this formula to digital asset networks, you get a really good fit. Having found the perfect formula that can help estimate just how important network growth is to the growth of a digital asset, Pal and his team then apply it to some of the popular cryptocurrencies. Here is the result for Bitcoin, then Ethereum, XRP, and finally, Polkadot. The charts show the GMI network value model having very similar movements with the market cap for each asset, proving how much network growth drives prices. In his tweets, Pal adds that the formula can be applied to all networks, including non-fungible token collections. He also believes the formula can be used to build models to give trading signals. Pal, a known Ethereum bull, also talks about how Bitcoin's increased network activity has made outperform other cryptocurrencies. The Real Vision CEO writes, We've recently been tinkering with the ROC. Bitcoin's recent slight outperformance can be explained by increased network activity versus others. Interesting to see the ROC change from all picking up, but too early to say that it is going to be the start of a positive trend. He accompanies the tweet with this chart showing the network value model for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Polkadot from January 1 to February 19, 2022. He goes further by adding, 
It also explains why Ethereum outperformed Bitcoin. The network was growing faster, but less so this year, hence why Ethereum has underperformed a bit. I think that networks that burn token supply will likely outperform over time, and that needs to be taken into account in the model at some point. In Ethereum, it's the transaction's volume that drives that. That same metric doesn't apply to chains that have high transaction volume but don't burn tokens. For those chains, it's the daily volume in dollars or units of value that matters, not the number of transactions. Raul Pal further explains how his new model works, pointing out that price is not an input in the model, which primarily focuses on how valuable an asset's network is to its growth. The former hedge fund manager writes, What is interesting is that price is not an input into the model. What it says is that the value of a network is how much value gets transferred and how many people are active participants transferring that value. Each chain creates value for different reasons. Bitcoin, for its pristine collateral, security, and SOV brings large numbers of users transferring large sums of value, hence why it is the most valuable network. But Ethereum has more applications, and the transaction value per monthly user is broadly in line with Bitcoin. Thus, if Ethereum attracts more users over time, it will flip in Bitcoin and market cap, not that it matters as we are comparing apples with oranges. Both have different value and uses. For people looking for the perfect model, Pal sounds in note of caution. He writes, Before the pedants talk about dual access, etc., I am just trying to find the best approximation, not a mathematically elegant and perfect formula. Contextualization and understanding beat perfection. But, if a network continues to create network effects, then the law of regression channel is still an excellent way of forecasting the future. Finally, the investment strategist makes some pretty specific price predictions for Bitcoin. His next tweets read, Assuming Bitcoin remains one standard deviation below trend, it gives a price target of $600,000. If it slows to two standard deviation below trend, then you get a number of around $300,000. Maybe the regression trend should be taken from 2013 to avoid the very early spike. That gives slower growth and lower targets. That gives trend at $700,000, one standard deviation below at $350,000 and two standard deviation at $200,000. He wraps up the long thread by adding, I hope you find this work useful in gaining an understanding of how these digital asset networks accrue value. To truly build value, they need use cases that transfer large ongoing volumes between lots of users. Pal has unpacked a lot of information in his thread. Let us know what part seems most exciting to you in the comment box below, and don't forget to smash the like button. Thanks for watching.